Is Twitter dying? And if it is, is its death really justified? I've been asked by several people to comment on the current events at Twitter. This is a channel about software and software engineering rather than the commercials of software companies or politics. But both of these are at play here. Nevertheless, these things are not wholly unrelated to the engineering that underpins them. So let's take a look at Twitter's approach to software development, the engineering of their systems, and talk about whether or not Elon Musk's changes are really justifiable. As usual, things are almost certainly more complicated than they seem. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. We are extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis, Transfic, Launch Darkly, and new sponsor Roost. All of these companies offer products and services that are well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, click on the links in the description below to check them out. If you'd like to learn more about some of the principles that I believe underpin good software engineering, my best-selling book, Modern Software Engineering, describes the guidelines that I believe we should follow to increase our chances of success, and aims to redefine what the discipline of modern software engineering should really mean. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to learn more. This is likely to be a contentious video, and I think it's important to mention that I've got no inside access to Twitter, its employees, or knowledge beyond what Twitter themselves and others have published about their approach to software development or the design of their systems. So I'm just interpreting what I've read from public sources. If you want to know more, there are lots of links to some of these sources in the description to this video. The first thing that I should say is that I think that the new management at Twitter have behaved rather badly, not only treating their employees poorly, but also seemingly acting against their own self-interests. But we'll come back to that. My main focus for today is to look at Twitter from a software engineering perspective and to see if there's any cause for complaint that may at least explain, if not justify, the poor treatment of the people that worked there. Twitter has been an important, I'd say perhaps the most important, provider of social media services. That is certainly true for me. I am a daily user of Twitter and use it to communicate with friends and followers, to follow trends, learn things, and to promote my businesses and other activities. Twitter hit the sweet spot for me and for millions of other people too. It's simple to use. The limitation of first 140 and later 280 characters per tweet was actually a brilliant idea. It focuses my mind as a content producer and stops me being too verbose and too rambly. And it means that as a reader, I can skim vast swathes of information quickly and easily. As far as Twitter as a center for software engineering goes, I confess that I've never really thought of them as thought leaders in that space. And of having looked at some of the information that they have published recently, I still hold that impression. If you think of organizations like Google, Netflix, Amazon, or even maybe Facebook, you can think of contributions that they've made that are widely known. You can probably think of people who represent those companies that are also well known and promote new ideas that change how software development works at scale. Amazon innovated with cloud-based services and AWS and distributed small two-pizza teams organized around microservices. Google with languages, build systems, Kubernetes and their own cloud offerings and process innovations like site reliability engineering. I never think of Twitter in the same way. I only ever think of them from the perspective of as a user really. Now, this is an unfair comparison in many ways, but also points to one of the problems of Twitter. They aren't as commercially successful as the others. Twitter's revenue is based on two things, ads and selling the data that they collect. And sadly, this hasn't been working terribly well lately. Last year, they made a net loss of $221 million. This is a small loss compared to their turnover of around $5 billion. But it's still a loss, and it follows worse losses in the previous year. 
So that's really the reason that it was for sale in the first place and was ultimately bought by Elon Musk. From a technical perspective, my overriding impression is that Twitter technically are rather followers rather than leaders. This is almost certainly doing them a disservice at some level. They are coping with information at a vast scale and were dealing with an exponential explosion of growth in their early days. These are difficult, challenging problems. But to illustrate my point, as I said, Twitter processes vast amounts of data. And to do so, they run multiple massive Hadoop clusters containing over 300 petabytes of data, running on tens of thousands of servers. Twitter believed this to be amongst the biggest Hadoop clusters in the world. But Google dropped the use of Hadoop in 2014 because it doesn't scale well. So according to Google, the creators of Hadoop, this isn't the best way to solve the big data problem. This is what I mean by following rather than leading. Now, Twitter may be right and Google may be wrong, but actually Twitter are currently changing their strategy now, so maybe not. Twitter started with a small, simplish system built around SQL databases and then played catch up for several years in response to their explosive growth and popularity. This isn't wrong. Good engineering is about designing for the problem that you have now, while keeping the door somewhat open for the problem that you may have if you're lucky one day. If they had started by building infrastructure to support hundreds of millions of users from day one, they would never have succeeded. Solve the problem that you have now. All of the successful big web monster style companies have similar tales to tell. It's only by seeing where your system is weak that you can really understand the next step of the problem well enough to make it stronger. So I can't criticise them for starting out like this. I should point out that I've never built a system that faced the same problems at the same scale. I've built scalable systems and high performance systems, but not for hundreds of millions of users. Few people have. I don't doubt that there is a lot that I don't know about these pro this problem, but I also think that there are several places where, based on my background, at the time when Twitter was dealing with that explosive growth, I would probably have made some different choices. I can say this in part because at around the, roughly the same time that Twitter was growing and evolving, I was involved in developing a different kind of challenging system. And we did make different choices. Although the system that I built was not at the same scale as Twitter in some ways, it does have some dimensions that we can compare. For example, in 2013, when tweets were 140 characters long, Twitter broke a record, achieving 143,199 tweets per second. The LMAX exchange that I helped to design and build processes around 800 thousand orders per second on a lot less hardware than Twitter uses and each order is encoded as a fixed message of more than 140 characters. These are not comparable systems but the problem is also not entirely dissimilar. I'm not trying to say that my team was great and that Twitter was rubbish. I'm only saying that knowledge of how to manage information at scale existed at the time when Twitter was growing. But I do think that Twitter seemed to have been a little late to adopt some of those ideas about scalability of data. For example, I recall in 2007 listening to Werner Virgil, CTO at Amazon, saying that SQL databases don't work at web scale. But that's what Twitter's built on, or was. So this wasn't new thinking then, but Twitter kept going with some old and not really cutting edge technology. Given their extensive use of Hadoop, we could say that they still are. The other aspect of software engineering is how we organise ourselves to deliver. Again, there's not a lot on the topic of process innovation that seems to be coming out of Twitter. Their process is described as Scrum-based. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Scrum. It's not enough alone to do a good job. But it also doesn't automatically guarantee that you can't do a good job. So it depends on what you mean by Scrum. Actually, Twitter's version of Scrum doesn't look too bad. 
but I struggle to find any re real detail on parts of their engineering process that would really make a difference, in my opinion. On the positive side, they do have a series of small teams, and as far as I can tell from what I've read, there's a reasonable degree of autonomy in those teams. This is good. It means that they're able to make progress without being developmentally coupled to other teams. They have regular feedback sessions where they reflect on what works and what doesn't. This is one of the building blocks of a learning culture of continuous improvement. All good stuff. On the downside, their approach to testing on the surface sounds a little bit simplistic to me, if I'm honest. They have unit tests and a small number of integration tests, described as smoke tests. Nothing wrong with that except that the numbers don't really seem to stack up to me. Twitter claimed to have thousands of unit tests and hundreds of integration tests. Those numbers seem extremely low to me. At LMAX, for what I assume was a much smaller code base, we had tens of thousands of unit tests created through TDD, around 60,000 and thousands of what we'd also call acceptance tests, which I'm assuming are similar to what Twitter call integration tests. I am struggling to find a clear statement of how many services or applications Twitter actually runs. They have hundreds of daily committers for puppet changes, for example, changing the configuration of their infrastructure. And in one post I read, it says that they run 150,000 applications and launch 130 million containers per day in Hadoop. I assume that this isn't 150,000 distinct applications, but is really 150,000 instances, so they're sharding the data. How many distinct applications there are is a bit of a guess. Elon Musk said in a tweet recently there are approximately 1,200 microservices, of which 40 are critical to Twitter's services. Even 40 critical services and only thousands of unit tests seems rather low to me. And for 1,200, it's only a few tests per service, which is definitely not correct. So thousands of unit tests seems extremely low. Twitter does not run a continuous delivery process. And they talk about starting to adapt to continuous integration. A lot of the resources that I've drawn this picture from are a few years old. And there are new initiatives that have been underway to modernise the system before Elon Musk's takeover. There's an interesting article linked below that describes their move of vast amounts of data from Twitter's own data centers to the cloud as part of the modernization of their architecture. And they're building a more distributed event-based system in the cloud. This makes a lot more sense to me as an architectural choice and is the destination that most of the big web monsters end up at. On the face of it, Twitter's problem looks to be quite amenable to a more distributed architectural approach. Relying on distributed non-normalized data stores and eventual consistency as strategies to share load in a more scalable way. Clearly, there are smart people at Twitter working on the detail of this. And certainly, lots of stuff that I haven't thought of. So I would characterize Twitter's approach to software engineering as less than leading edge, but not terrible. They have historically made some missteps, but they're understandable missteps. I think that they could be doing considerably better from a development process perspective, and that in turn hampers their ability to experiment and try new ideas and get to better solutions faster. But they're working under some pretty complex, difficult constraints. They have a massive data legacy problem that isn't at all simple to deal with. You can't easily migrate exabytes of data and keep the lights on while you're doing it. These are genuinely difficult problems to solve. My impression is that in recent times they have started down what looks to me like a more profitable track. But I would say that their development approach and culture could probably do with a bit of a revamp. I'd advise them to focus on improving feedback on changes, and my guess is that they, they need to, amongst other things, beef up their approach to testing and release. These are all guesses on my part, based on my reading of Twitter's own blog site. So is Musk right in taking such a radical stance? 
Well, I can see why he may think so. I think that the engineering culture could be better. And from my understanding of other Musk ventures like Tesla and SpaceX, their engineering culture is very strong indeed. The problem is how do you achieve such a change? Let me try to state my position on this as clearly as I can. If you want to do something world class in software to tackle problems that other people don't know how to solve, there's a degree to which you need to make tough decisions sometimes. Not everyone is capable of operating at world class. So I accept that sometimes in those situations you may need to, for example, fire people or change how things work in radical ways. But there's much more to that than just firing people. And the new management at Twitter has seemingly done more than just make tough calls here. They've been random and, to be honest, cruel in how they've dealt with the situation. To my mind, that can only be counterproductive, even if they are correct in their analysis of the problem. I take this timeline from a blog post by Gurgli Uros. Week one, after working through the weekend, approximately 50% of the staff were let go. Week two, some of those fired were called back within a day, when management realised that they were key people. Most software engineers declined the offer to return. Remote work had been cancelled overnight and managers were told that now they have to code for at least 20% of their time while still managing 20 plus reports. Week three, those criticising company leadership were terminated without warning. All of these things happened during the holiday period where people were going to be looking for jobs while companies were basically in shutdown mode. This is not a good way of treating people. Elon Musk issued a two-day ultimatum for remaining employees who had to confirm that they want to be part of what he called Twitter 2.0, signing up for extremely hardcore long hours at high intensity. Those who didn't agree got three months severance. This is not how to win hearts and minds. Once the new Twitter management realised this, they tried to back off some of their draconian actions, relaxing the rules about remote working and trying to lure back key employees who had declined the new Twitter 2.0 regime. The blog post that I mentioned says that many of them were offered over $100,000 in extra pay rise and still declined. It goes on to state that as of the end of November, Twitter's total employee count based on active LDAP accounts was down from to 2,675 from about 7,500 just a few months before. To build great world-class software, you need good people. But even more than that, you need motivated, enthusiastic, engaged people. If these claims are true, this is not a good way to treat people. This is pretty despicable. But even if you don't care about treating people poorly, it seems obviously counterproductive to me. Even if some of the people at Twitter, when Musk took over, needed to go, this was a fairly dumb way to achieve that. I guess that one of the downsides of being a billionaire is that you tend to be surrounded by worshippers, rather than people who are willing to point out your mistakes when you make them. When it comes to engineering, worshippers aren't good enough because ultimately reality will intervene when you make dumb choices, whoever you are. I hope that Twitter survives this. I've always liked it as a user. But if not, you can also find me at Mastodon. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoy my stuff, please consider supporting our work on this channel by joining our Patreon community. Thank you. Thank you.